Okay, folks, with this spreadsheet, you might want to think of it as a Swiss Army knife of, of capital investment valuation spreadsheets because what I've got in front of you are really the net present value, the IRR, which is internal rate of return, as well as the modified IRR, modified internal rate of return, all in one package. And the reason I'm doing it this way is so you can juxtapose each particular type. And also, I want to show you that, that in the real world, things aren't always as rosy as, as what a textbook may present them to be. In other words, in this case, we've got an eight-year project, and it cost us $750,000 to do, whatever that is. And, and these projects are things like uh, investing in a new business, and maybe you're going to open a new branch, and you're trying to see what the cash flows are in that branch. And what I've done here is intentionally shown some negative cash flows. For example, in year three, in year six, we have negative a net negative cash flow in those years. And what I'm trying to do is stress to you the importance when you do capital investment decisions and the analysis is you need to construct a, a very detailed spreadsheet. You need to show it by year. And what I'm trying to do here is show you that the algebra that is used is also then going to give us exactly the same result as if we use the Excel formula. For example, you can see right now the net present value, and I'll get into all the mechanics of how that's done. In this, in this cell is taking the sum of each of these cash flows, and you can see that it's, it's really a present value calculation. And so the net present value, by definition, is saying I will net against my outflow in year zero. And remember, year zero is now. It's today. It's when you do the project. And then all these future cash flows some are positive, a couple are negative, and then you will net those numbers. You can see what the sum is. It's 657,652 against the outflow of 750,000, and you have a net negative number, a, a negative net present value. What does that mean? Well, it means you should not do the project because it is not earning a rate of return that is above what we call the hurdle rate. Okay, the, the hurdle rate is what you're trying to, to at least uh, make, and in this case, the hurdle rate is 5.8%. Because I'm using, if you look at the formula, I'm using this rate here, um, excuse me, I'm, I'm using the 5.8% to discount it, and because when I do that, there's a net negative, net present value, this project is not earning at least the 5.8%. It's, it's a negative number. Now, and there is your Excel spreadsheet, and the syntax for that is very simple. As most formulae in Excel, you start with an equal sign, equals NPV, close parentheses, and then you're looking G8 is going to be that uh, the number of periods. We have that here. And then you've got the range of your cash flows, which is going to be from row 6 to row 13, and you see that right here on your screen. And then you add, finally, the negative number that's presented and what the cost of this project is. And so it's a very concise way to do it. You don't have to go through all the algebra that I'm doing here. And all I'm, the, the only reason I'm doing that is to prove to you that Excel is, is doing it for you. So you can trust it, and it makes it a lot easier. Now, internal rate of return, what's going on? What's the definition of internal rate of return? IRR, by definition, is that rate of return on the project that causes the net present value to be zero. And remember from your textbook, the assumption is that all those cash flows are being reinvested at the actual internal rate of return. And so in this case, the internal rate of return is calculated to be 2.813%. Now, there's a sanity check here because I know that that IRR is going to be less than the required rate of return of 5.8%. Why do I know that? It's because at 5.8%, I had a negative NPV. Now, just for giggles, what I can do is I can change that to a 0.02813. And then you can see that my IRR is exactly equal to that percentage rate, and I have a net present value because of rounding equal to 2. Now I'm going to hit the undo button here and bring things back the way they were. Now finally, this is where you can show and demonstrate your value to your firm and be a proponent of the modified internal rate of return, the MER. 
and the modified internal return internal rate of return is something that's not all that old uh, it was taught to me in my master's program back in the mid 90s and it's been around since that time but up until that time really hadn't been heard of and what it does and how it differs from NPV and IRR is it makes an assumption that those cash flows and I'm going to specify the positive cash flows from the project as you incur them they are reinvested in the firm because what are you going to do with that excess cash you can go put it in a coffee can in the ground or you can reinvest it in the business you can buy back treasury stock you can do a number of things but you're assuming that those positive cash flows are going to be reinvested at the rate of investment here that we're using the um, the 5.8 percent okay it, it reinvested in the business and so you're going to bring those to a future value and so if you look at these formulae what am I doing I'm taking any positive amount to the future to get my my aggregate future value and then I'm saying I'll bring it back what rate of return will bring all that future value cash flow back to present value and net me to a zero net present value so look at the rate that I'm using here you can see I'm using G8 which is that reinvestment of cash inflows that I get the 5.8 percent now one thing to keep in mind on MER if you have a year where you have a negative cash flow from the project and you can see that in, in period three and period six I have negative cash flows you do not take those to future value at that reinvestment rate what you do is you bring them to present value at the financing rate in this case 4.7 and you can see that I'm referencing G9. So that's a very critical thing to do. And what it does is shows you then at the at using straight algebra, the MER I get is 4.173, and certainly that is exactly equal to what Excel gives me when I use the equal MIRR function. Okay? Now I know this has been very quick, but I'm going to provide this spreadsheet to you and I want you to, to study it, see where the formulae are coming from, and then you can you can trust the Excel calculations here. And also it's a good a good structure to use to know that you don't always have positive cash flows from your project. Thank you.